In this video I'm going to talk about how to add projectiles to the enemies and um, this is something that you'll need to customize for what you want your game to look like. The first thing that I did was edit the add enemy and I added a table to hold the projectiles for that certain enemy. So whatever that enemy shoots, there's a way to store that enemy's projectiles and a timer and that helps regulate how fast the projectiles can go. Notice that I set the timer equal to math.random instead of equal to zero so that my projectiles are a little more unpredictable and they don't all start at the same time. Then when I'm drawing the enemies I needed to account for drawing the projectiles. So if the enemy is active then I had my draw projectiles called with the E, which represents the current enemy that I'm looking at. So then in draw enemies, we need to draw also the projectiles while we're drawing each enemy. So for mine, I only wanted my enemies to be able to throw projectiles if they were active. So in this if active, if you look down here, this is still inside that if active section. I put um, my timer increment for that enemy and then also my draw projectiles with that enemy as the input. We're going to write the draw projectiles function a little bit later. If you want your enemy to be able to throw projectiles whether it's active or not, or maybe only if it's inactive, you would put these two lines of code in a different place. So if you want your enemy to not throw projectiles while it's active, like moving, but do throw projectiles once it's been squashed, you would put that those two lines of code in the else, because this is what draws if the enemy is not active. If you want your enemy to be able to throw projectiles no matter what, if it's active or not active, then you would put those two lines of code outside the um, if E active, but still inside the for loop. So the for loop is looping through all the enemies. So you would put it right where my cursor is, and that would still allow you to access the E for the enemy that we're looking at in the for loop. Okay, so there's two functions that we need to write. The first function is add projectile. This takes, um, an in this takes two inputs. One is the enemy or any character really, and the other is the speed of the projectile, so that's customizable. Um, this table holds all the information that I felt I needed for the projectile. It's costume. Um, for me, I was able to um, look at the sprites, and my sprite original costume is this first thing. So I counted and my projectile is over here. And for me, that number would be this number plus eight. You may or may not be able to do that. Maybe you're just gonna say the projectile is a certain number, whatever you need to do for how you set up your um, sprite costumes. And then I have the X and Y of the projectile, which I started out as the enemy or character's X and Y value. So it starts out at the same place that that character is. I have the speed of the projectile and whether the projectile is active or not. And then I store the projectile in the character's projectiles table. So remember we added to the enemy and we did add enemy. We added this projectiles table. That's where we're adding that projectile. Okay, so we're in pro add projectiles and then the sprite represents whichever enemy or character we're looking at. Projectiles is the name of the table and then inside the table we're saying we want to look at the last spot in the table and then go to the next spot, and that's when we're adding our projectile. And then the next function that we're going to make is draw projectiles. It takes one input, and that is the enemy or character. 
for ease of doing this code, I named my um, projectiles table as SP for sprite projectiles. You don't have to do this. If you don't do this, then you would need to do sprite projectiles everywhere that you see an SP. Okay. So this SP is just the table where the projectiles are being held for a certain sprite. So I'm looping through all the projectiles, and then I named the actual projectile as P. So whichever projectile we're looking at in the table, I called it P. That'll change as the for loop goes through. It looks at the first projectile, second projectile, on and on. If the projectile is active, then we want to allow it to move. We want to draw it. And then I said if it goes off the screen, then I'm going to deactivate that projectile. Okay, and then we have some ends for all the, the functions that or all the commands that we did here. Finally, we need to actually call add projectile and draw projectiles. So in the draw enemy, remember we added this timer and draw projectiles. So we took care of calling the draw projectiles already, but we haven't actually added any projectiles yet. So I'm going to go into my move functions. And I have several op options. So where, whichever of these, the AI, the drop, or the march, or whatever your move functions are, where you want to add, um, add projectiles to that particular kind of movement, you would need to add in the add projectiles. So for me, I went ahead and added projectiles into the march. So in here, I added this if statement that takes into account the particular enemy's timer. So whenever the enemy was added to the scene, that's when its timer started. This is basically setting how often the projectile will move. And then I reset it. If the sprite timer reaches a certain number, then it's going to add a projectile and then reset the timer so that once it reaches that number again, it will add another projectile. When I add the projectile, I say which character or enemy it's going to apply to, and that is just this input here. And then I also give it a speed. And this one, I'm moving right, so I want this speed to be to the right. On this next one down here, I did pretty much the same thing, except I gave it a negative 1.5 because it's moving to the left. So I wanted my projectile to also be moving to the left. So that's move march. If you are going to add it to something like the AI, then you might want to match your direction to whatever direction the AI was moving. Um, so you might have a little bit more going on with your projectile. You might want to add another input, like this might be speed x, and then there might be a speed Y so that you can match the direction of the AI instead of only being able to go left and right. For me, I was only giving it to the march, so I only let it go left and right. And then we want to see if we want to make sure the projectile can hit something. So this is my hit projectiles function. So I have um, no inputs into this function. I loop through my enemies, and then I just save the current enemy as E to make it easier for myself to do the code down below. Um, I loop through the projectiles for that certain enemy, and then I save the projectile as the current projectile for that enemy. And then I check if there's a hit. So for me, I wanted to see if the projectile hits Blobby specifically. If you have a different way of doing your game, then you might want to have an input that is the sprite that you're trying to hit. And then you can check hit projectiles with blobby, hit projectiles with, you know, cow, and hit projectiles with pig, or whatever it might be. So you might call this multiple times, potentially, if you wanted to check whether a projectile has hit different characters. For me, I only care about it hitting Blobby. So I'm checking Blobby's position and the projectile's position. 
and seeing if there's a collision there. And then I have some code that checks if there was a hit. In the if, notice that I say if there is a hit and if the projectile is active and blobby dot invincible. You may or may not have the invincible part. That just means that Blobby used a slime to kill an enemy, and now he can't be killed for a little while. So you may not have that and blobby.invincible equals false part. And I'll scroll over here. This is just a then at the end of this line here. And then if there was a hit, I took a life away from Blobby, and I moved Blobby to his respawn point. And then I ended all those ifs and fours, and then the end of the function. So then we need to call hit projectiles, and I have done that up in my tick function. It's possible that I may have rearranged these functions a little bit, but basically just somewhere in your tick function while you're doing your moving and your drawing and all of that, um, you want to call your hit projectiles. So don't forget to save and get this file. And I'm going to go ahead and run it and just see what that looks like. I'm going to check which level my march is in. So level one, level two, add enemy. Let's see what's over here. That's drop. Here's march. So march is in my level three. So I'm going to run it and I'm going to go into level three. So I'm just going to type three and then there we go. And you can see these enemies. I'm going to run it again. And you can see that they're, each time I run it, the projectiles end up spawning at different times. So let me run it again. There. Okay. So also you can see that when it when a projectile hits Blobby, I lose a life and then I set my respawn point to down here so I don't just sit there keeping on losing lives every time I get hit with a milk bottle. So that's basically it. You can add as many projectiles as you want to each enemy and have them collide with whoever you want and that will help you kind of customize how your game works. I look forward to seeing how you customize this for your game.